Good afternoon, Mr. Buffett, Mr. Munger. My name is Mark Stender from San Francisco. Um, my question involves, uh, if you live in California, which I understand you do some time of the year, it's almost mandatory that you shop at Whole Foods markets. Um, they sell a lot of organic food there, and I was wondering if anyone ever tried to feed you organic food or uh, organic food stock. I've never been near the place, but um, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, <laughs> who I've never thought of as a health nut, but uh, he may have some comment to make on this being a Californian. No, my idea of a good place to shop is Costco. Uh, <laughs> Costco has these heavily marbled fillet steaks in the finest grade. And, and uh, the idea of eating a little whole grain whatever and washing it down with some carrot juice has just never appealed to me. <laughs> we don't have a lot of arguments between the two of us about where to eat. <laughs> Number nine. Uh, hello, thank you. I'm uh, Sherman Silber from St. Louis. I'm a fertility doctor in St. Louis. We kind of view ourselves as the uh, Berkshire Hathaway of infertility treatment. We don't know anything really about business. We're doctors and scientists. And so first, I'd just like to say, I really appreciate you, the people that you have on your board and would like to keep it that way, because we do know a lot about character. And I'm happy to have our savings safe uh, with uh, you and the people of character uh, that represent the company. I just had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to uh, uh, one of the former managers of the uh, Fidelity Magellan Fund, uh, managed huge amounts of money, and he, he never really met you, and I was saying, I may have a chance to ask uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger a question. What would that question be? I wanted to have some idea of something intelligent I could ask business-wise. And he thought, if he had the opportunity to talk to you, the best thing is to give you what would sound like a softball question because, um, because you could maybe bring more profoundness to this than we hear usually. What, in view of the Iraq war, uh, consumer debt that's increasing, declining job growth, uh, declining pay in the jobs that are growing, uh, prospects of increased interest rates, um, uh, he has this view that the next t five to ten years are going to be very difficult. What would your view be about this, the investment future for the next five to ten years in view of all these negative factors going on? That's too soft for me. I think Warren should take that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that at any given point in history, including when stocks were their cheapest, <clears throat> you could find um, – a, an equally impressive number of negative factors. I mean, you can, you could have sat down in 1974 when stocks were screaming bargains, and you could have written down all kinds of things that would would have caused you to say, you know, the the future is just going to be terrible. And similarly, at at the top, you know, or any time you can write down a, a large list of, of of things that would be quite on the bullish side. We don't pay. We really don't pay any attention to that sort of thing. I mean, we we have. Uh, you might say that our underlying premise, uh, and I think it's a pretty sound underlying premise, is that this country will do very well, <clears throat> um, and and in particular, it will do well for business. Business has done very well. You know, the, the Dow went from 66 to 10,000 plus in the hundred years of the. 20th century, and we had two world wars, and nuclear bombs, and flu epidemics, and we, you, know, you, you name it, Cold War. There's always, there are always, there's always problems in the future. There are always opportunities in the future, and in this country, the opportunities have won out over the problems over time, and I think they will continue to do so absent the weapons of mass destruction, which is another question, and business won't make much difference in, if anything really drastic happens along that line. So we don't, I, I don't, I can't remember any discussions Charlie and I have had ever going back to 1959 <clears throat> that where we 
would have come to the conclusion at the end of them that we would have passed on a great business opportunity, uh, a business to buy because of external conditions. <clears throat> Nor did we ever buy anything that we thought was uh, mediocre simply because we thought that the world was going to be wonderful. It, uh, uh, it won't be the American economy, in my view, that does in investors over a five or 10 or 20 year period. It, it will be the investors themselves. Uh, if you look at the record of the 20th century, you'd say, how can anybody have missed, you know, in owning equities during that time? And yet, you know, we had, we had all kinds of people wiped out, you know, at, in the 29, 32 period. We had, we had all kinds of things that were bad. But you, if, if, if you would just own stocks right straight through, didn't leverage them, you know, you would you'd have gotten a perfectly decent return. So we're, we're unaffected in essence by the by the variables you mentioned just show us a good business tomorrow and we'll jump at the hook uh, charlie yeah i think but it's also true that both of us have said at various times over the last three years that we wouldn't be at all surprised if professionally invested money in america had a pretty modest result over a fairly extended period of the future compared to the very dramatically high returns that it had achieved uh, up to about three years ago. And so far, that's been proved out to be pretty much right. Yeah, our, Certain our, stretches are easier than other stretches. Yeah, our expectations were, were more modest than most people's a few years ago. We didn't say the world was coming to an end or anything. We just said that people had gone crazy in certain sectors and that, and that anybody that thought that, that you could you know, sit at home and day trade and, and make double digit returns over time or do anything but that you were entitled to that, you know, by just sticking a little money in your 401k or something was really living in a fool's paradise. Uh, but that was never accompanied by any predictions of disaster for the American economy as a whole or for American business as a whole. Uh, it's People get crazy notions from time to time in financial markets, and you know, we've commented on this earlier, but they just believe things that there's, it's hard to understand how they can believe. Now, to some extent, they get sold that by other people. Uh, but uh, uh, American business really is, has never let investors down as a group, but investors have done themselves in quite frequently.